Hi, my name is Aaron Dreer. This is Quadrupole Ion Trap Mass Spectrometry, and I am a Georgia Southern University student currently taking instrumental analysis. This is a flow diagram of QIT. It usually uh, will come off of an AI technique such as GC or LC. And once the sample comes off of that, it needs to be ionized before the QIT can use it. Forms of ionization are the many common ones, EI, CI, MALDI. Um, electron impacts actually one of the most common ones I've seen paired with QIT. Once the sample is ionized, it will go into the QIT and be separated based on uh, mass to charge ratio. It, uh, the principles as to how it will do this I'll discuss later. The detector, which consists of an electron dynode and electron multiplier, will transfer the ions into an electrical signal, which then can be turned into a chromatogram by the readout, which is mass to charge ratio relative to abundancy. This right here is a diagram of the QIT. Uh, I'm going to illustrate how it functions by using my cursor as an ion. It will start at the ion source and the ions will travel to the end cap electrode. This is the entry end cap electrode. The end caps are charged by AC current. If the current is, uh, if the current is negative, then the ions will be allowed to pass through. If the current is positive, then it will act as a gate and stop the ions from passing in. This is important because QIT can only function with so many ions inside the trap. Once inside the trap, the ions will float around. Uh, some of them will coalesce in the middle. Some of them will be flying around wildly on the outside. They won't touch the edges due to the charge. Instead, if they fly too far outside, they will exit the QIT and then go to the detector. And the both the end caps are charged with AC current and the ring electrode is actually charged with DC current. That's the way it uses the RF and DC potentials to separate mass to charge. The abilities uh, of the QIT is it's very, it has a very fast scan speed. It's also very sensitive and the system is really robust. It has low maintenance costs. The QIT also has the ability to do what's known as MSN, which means you could stack uh, you could stack several different techniques of MS or just multiple MSs together. It's actually it's recorded that you could go to N equals 12, so that would be 12 different mass mass spectrometry uh, techniques stacked together to yield a better result. The paper I used in my uh, in my research, they used the GCMSMS equipped with a quadrupole ion trap to determine the RRF or relative response factors involved in polysilic aromatic hydrocarbons or PAHs. Essentially, there's a maintenance that's required on GCMSMS, and with this maintenance. Um, there are RRF factors which will inhibit the reliability of the response of the instrument and so that is essentially what they are measuring in the experiment and they're measuring it on specifically on this specific GCMS. The way they measure it is they will develop a chromatogram before and after cleaning the glass liner the top chromatogram is from before cleaning, and as you can see, the the bottom uh, bottom parts of the peak are a lot wider, and the peaks aren't as aren't as big as compared to the bottom one, which is after the cleaning. This this is to determine how important the maintenance is and how how frequent the maintenance should be on GCMSs. 
these are my references. The top reference is the paper. The two bottom ones are websites that helped aiding me in the ability of understanding how QIT works. I hope through this presentation you have gained knowledge and an understanding of QIT. And have a nice day.